Guys, my wedding's coming up and I absolutely hate my stepmother. It goes all the way back to when I was a child. She's always neglected me, tormented me, been toxic to me, and made my life a living heck. Guys, this is a multi-updated story. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Let's jump into this wild ride. I'm 28 and female, and I'm getting married to my fiancé, 34 male, in a few months. We've been together since I was 22, and have been engaged for three years. Initially, we planned to get married in 2021, but because of COVID, we had to push it off our wedding just for a year. Thankfully, everything seems to have mostly died down now, so we've decided that August of 2023 will be the perfect time to get married. I cannot stress how long we've been planning this wedding. Neither of us grew up with parents who stay together, so we really value the sanctity of marriage. And we had a lot of talks before we agreed to get married. Neither of us really believed in marriage and we entered into a relationship together with the idea that we would never get married. But things changed. We originally had an open relationship, but we both realized separately after a few months that we wanted to date each other exclusively. Well, after a lot of deep conversations and difficult soul searching, we realized that we really do want to spend the rest of our lives together and bind ourselves together in a legal marriage ceremony. So, every single detail of this wedding has been planned out meticulously. Both of us are A-type personalities and we both wanted this wedding to be absolutely flawless. Initially, we wanted to keep the ceremony very small, but the both of us have large extended families and we realized that it would not be fair to tell some people that they didn't mean enough of us to be invited. The whole thing has kind of spiraled into a huge ceremony with a huge party and a huge amount of people on the guest list. Neither of us are bothered by this. We felt pressured to invite more people than we were comfortable with, but we both eventually came around to the idea of having a big wedding than we've previously planned. We see it as a ceremony worthy of our love for each other. The issue is this. There's one person that I have very deliberately left off of my guest list, and that's causing a lot of drama in my family circle. My stepmother has not been invited to the wedding, and she's causing a huge stink about it. Original plan was, we communicated her lack of an invite as a necessity and used the small intimate ceremony as an excuse to make sure that she did not come. We told her, and my father, that we would only be inviting very close friends and family and that she just did not make the cut. Well, this did not exactly go down well. But my father managed to calm down his wife's hysterics to a point. At least we didn't have to witness them and we were happy enough with the arrangement. The problem is, as the guest list had swelled, to well over a hundred people, we no longer have an excuse for not inviting her. The venue has had been changed three times due to the increasing number of guests, and my father has gotten it into his head that this means the plan has changed, and he can bring his wife. So, he RSVP'd the other day and listed her as his plus one. Honestly, I don't know how to broach the subject with him, I mean, I don't want to be rude and outright tell him that his wife is not welcome at the wedding, but when it boils down to it, that is essentially the truth. For a bit of background, my stepmother is insane. I mean, she is the evil stepmother levels of nasty, and she's just a horrible toxic person to be around altogether. I literally cannot say one kind word about this woman, not one. My parents got divorced when I was 12, though they should have separated a long time before that. I can't remember any time in my entire childhood where my parents seemed like they even liked each other for a second, let alone loved each other. There were constant fights, screaming matches that devolved into throwing things, and my father was always slamming doors and escaping to the bar. Normally, when a child is told that their parents are getting a divorce, they're distraught. The usual reaction would be tears, sobbing, begging them to stay together even. That's what I've heard anyways. Well, 
all I felt was relief. I thought that my home life would finally be calm and peaceful, and I was completely wrong in this assumption. At first, I assumed that I would be staying in my childhood home with my mom, and my father would move out and find a place somewhere. I thought that I would only see him on the weekends. That's what all my friends with divorced parents have done, and I thought that it would be the same for me. Well, it didn't turn out that way. It did at first. Their separation pretty much followed the script of every divorce I knew. At least everyone I've seen on TV or heard about from my friend. My dad moved out and got an apartment close by. Both of them started showering me with attention like they were always just competing for my affection. And it worked. I was loving life. There were no more fights. I didn't have to hide my head under the pillow to sleep at night. And I was getting expensive gifts all the time. It didn't last, however, because my mother got sick. My mom always had pretty bad health and she was premature and was unlikely to survive more than a few weeks. But somehow, some way, she managed to make it. Due to this, though, she does have a lot of health issues. A few months after my father moved out, my mom had to be hospitalized due to a heart attack. It was all very traumatic. At first, my aunt came to stay and take care of me. But once it was made obvious that my mom was going to be in the hospital for longer than a month, my dad moved back in so that he could take care of me. The problem was this. He brought his new girlfriend to live with him, and we did not get along. It became clear to me that my father had been dating this girl for a lot longer than he had been separated from Ma. They had so many inside jokes that it was difficult to keep up with them, and she was always referencing experiences from years ago. At least my dad had the defense to try to hide that he's been cheating on my mother with this woman for years, but... She had no such qualms. So, of course, I disliked her from the start on principle. I was loyal to my poor sick mother, who was wasting away in a hospital bed, while the other woman slept in her bed and lived in her house. This was all before I truly got to know the woman, of course. If she had been lovely, I have no doubt that I would have warmed up to her quickly and stopped caring about the obvious slap in the face to my mother. I mean, I was 12 after all. I couldn't keep that righteous anger up for long. I think that's how my dad felt too, and once it was clear that I knew he had been cheating on mother, I think he hoped that I would just get over it once I got to know her, but this, <laughs> this did not happen. My stepmother hated me for the moment she locked eyes on me. That day, my dad introduced us. I look a lot like my mother. That might have something to do with it, but I think she would have hated me even if I was an exact carbon copy of my father. I try not to think about that year very much, where my mom was in hospital very often, because every time I do, I start getting angry again and again. My stepmother even seemed to get jealous every time my dad showed me any attention or affection. This would have been irritating no matter what, but it was especially bad because I was 12 years old, worried that my mom was going to die. Obviously, he spent a lot of time comforting me, trying to cheer me up, and every time this happened, she would get a little bit nastier. She'd always be very sweet when my father was around, of course, as it was the way these people were. She would be the picture of grace if he was in the room asking me what I wanted to eat asking how school was going, telling me she was sure that my mother was going to be fine. She would offer to brush my hair, run me a bath, all sorts of stuff. It was when my dad was at work that she would turn nasty. She didn't work. I don't know why, and with my mother in the hospital, my dad had to pick up extra shifts just to pay the bills. When I got home from school every day, it would be her waiting for me, rather than one of my actual parents, this was when she would go in on me. When I was trying to do homework, she would stand over me telling me that I was doing everything wrong. She would spill things on my work and pretend it was an accident. She would distract me and laugh when I made a mistake. These all seem like very small things, I know. But let me tell you, they add up. 
I was almost in tears by the time that father came home. She would explain it away by saying that I was just worried about mother, and my dad would believe her each and every time. I tried to tell him, of course. No child's able to keep these things bottled up, but he never believed me. He told me that he was very disappointed in me for coming up with all these lies, and that he thought I was a better person than that. I think that he thought I just hated her because I was on mom's side in the divorce. But let me tell you, oh no, we were long past that. The worst part is, I didn't even tell mom about any of this when it was happening. My stepmother had somehow gotten into my head and made me think that if I told mother, she'd get stressed out and her heart would just give out. It's really easy to manipulate a child whose parents just got a divorce and whose mother is very, very sick. As time went on, I don't know what happened, but somehow my father became desensitized to the way his girlfriend would absolutely treat me. After a year, mom got better and was discharged, thank goodness. So dad moved out and took his girlfriend with him, but I still had to see them on weekends. I begged my mother not to make me keep going back to their apartment, but dad would have brought her to court if she stopped my visitation, so there was nothing that she could do about it. Soon after that, it was announced that they were going to get married. I had a real breakdown at this point because I'd always been holding out hope that my father would dump her, and I would not have to see her any longer. Well, I guess you could say my hopes were dashed. She seemed to take a real pleasure in showing off to me that my father loved her more than he loved me. Thankfully, since I only ever saw them on weekends, I was left alone with her a lot less, but I think that as I grew up and became more and more like my mom, dad started resenting me a little. This was all my new stepmother needed, and she ramped up her torment a degree every single time I saw her. At first, it was just words. She would call me a witch and say I looked to my dad for help, and he would pretend that he didn't even hear her. She would tell me that she wished that my mom had died and taken me with her. She would say that my father didn't love me. Eventually, she upgraded to hitting me. I don't think her intentions were ever to hurt me. I think she disliked proving to me that she could do it and that I couldn't stop her. She never left a mark, so I couldn't prove it to anybody. I was still worried that if I told mom and upset her, she would get sick again, so she has no idea what's been going on. The physical abuse eventually died down, but that's only because my stepmother eventually got pregnant. This opened up an entire new avenue for her, though, and when I was at the apartment, I would be expected to wait on her 24-7. I would have to do the cooking the cleaning, the laundry, absolutely everything. If I refused, she would put on the waterworks and run crying to my father right away, of course, telling him that I wanted her to strain herself so that she would miscarry and I would continue to be his only child. I have no idea why my father believed that a 14-year-old child could be so devious, but he did. The only bonus was that once the baby was born, my dad showed a lot less interest in me, and I convinced him that I didn't need to come and stay anymore. I just made up some excuse about needing the weekends to study, and that I couldn't concentrate when I was at his apartment with all the crying. I honestly think deep down he was glad that he didn't need to worry about me anymore. I mean... I haven't had to see my stepmom regularly ever since my little brother was born. With dad working more to pay for all the diapers and stuff, and my stepmom being busy, little mother, I kinda slipped through the cracks, which I was more than grateful for. I see them during holidays like Christmas and stuff, and I like to keep up with my little brother. He's 14 years old now. So thankfully, we can communicate over text, but... When he was younger, my only chance to see him was during holidays. He's a good kid, and I think that dad likes the way that we're close. He doesn't take after his mom very much, personality-wise, and we get along really well. Every time I visit, though, and I see my stepmom, I still feel like that 12-year-old kid who had something hissing in their ear. 
telling them that their father didn't love them and that their mom was going to die. Obviously, this means I don't want this woman anywhere close to my wedding. My dad and brother are invited, of course, and I forgave my father a long time ago. For my own sake, and it wouldn't feel right to not have him there. I just don't know how to broach the subject of stepmother. Dad seems to think that her attendance is as natural as his, and I don't know how to tell him that the woman is not welcome. I'm not going to budge on this either. Dad still won't admit that she was abusive to me, and anytime you try to bring it up, he goes temporarily deaf. When I tell him that she cannot come, he's going to ask why. How can I tell him something that he's refusing to actually hear? Advice on how to talk about this would be appreciated muchly. Thank you, guys. What's up, everybody? Mr. Redito here. So, I have an update for this story. Multiple updates, actually. I hope you guys are having a great day. Let's go ahead and jump into update number one. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. And here's your first update. Hey, everyone. Thank you all so much for all your amazing advice you guys left in the replies to my original post. I tried a lot of your suggestions and unfortunately none of them worked. Some of you suggested that I try to talk him over text, so that I wouldn't be faced with his emotions if he got angry. He absolutely ignored what I said. I wrote him a long, long message full of details and expressed my full emotions and he texted that he lost his glasses and can't read what I said. Some people suggested that I tell him in person so that he can't run away. Well, I did that afterwards. This was my big mistake. I think. Having the conversation in public was also a misstep because he had my issue with yelling at me in a restaurant full of people. Honestly, I haven't seen my father that mad since he was with mom. He was nearly frothing at the mouth. He told me that I've been trying to break him up with my stepmother ever since I've met her. And he told me that I was a selfish brat for not letting him be happy. Again, he used the narrative that my mom had turned me against his wife out of jealousy and anger that he had cheated on her, and that I was an idiot for letting her manipulate me in such ways. I'm not normally a confrontational person, so when he started yelling, my instinct was to just apologize. But I wasn't backing down this time. My fiancé gave me a great pep talk just before I left to meet my father at the restaurant, and I didn't want to let him down, so I shot back at my father for the first time in my life. I mean, the delivery was a little awkward, I think, but I know that I got my point to cross. It felt like a real weight off my shoulders, finally letting everything out. I hadn't realized how much effort I put into burying this stuff until it was all just pouring out of my mouth without me even noticing. It was completely out of my control. It felt like this stuff had just been bursting out of me, and now that it had its chance, it couldn't stop. I finally told him everything. I have not been this open and honest in the text that he pretended that he couldn't read. I just said that I wasn't comfortable having my stepmother at the wedding. Well, this time, I showed absolutely no mercy. I feel terrible for the people at the table next to us because they got a front row seat to our family drama. The confrontation of the century. I told my dad that from the moment that he's brought that woman into my life, that she's been making my life a living heck. I said that this is deliberate ignorance and the way he's pretending not to notice when she said something so disgusting and that he failed me as a father when he hadn't stopped her from hitting me. I said that him cheating on mom had nothing to do with my hatred for his wife. I told him that he was projecting when he accused me of trying to manipulate him at 14 years of age and that I was just a child. A child who deserved to be protected by her father, not fed to the wolves the way I was. I didn't stay to hear him out after that, I just left. I know that his face was pale as a ghost. When I left, though, I doubt he ever thought I was ever going to be so honest with him. He's a repressed man, and I think that he was hoping he'd pass down that trait to me, and he did. I just worked hard to break through it. 
I just want to thank everybody one more time who gave me some solid advice on this. Though, I think that you guys' suggestions were solid, it's just that my dad refuses to hear me when I tell him the truth. At this point, if it wasn't for my brother, I'd tell my dad that he was no longer welcome at the wedding either. If I cut off my father, I'll never get to see my little brother, and it isn't fair to completely remove myself from his life like that. I want him to be there when I get married. And if that means I have to put up with my father being there, I will. But that woman isn't welcome no matter how many fits dad throws. Update number two, one month to the wedding. Hey, we've been doing a lot of planning and my dad's officially been reinvited to the ceremony, though he has never actually uninvited in the first place. We had a long conversation a few days after I blew up on him in the restaurant. He called me and asked me if I would meet up with him. I was nervous that he was going to yell at me some more, so I brought my fiancé with me for some moral support. I'm not 100% sure that the conversation would have gone the same way if my fiancé hadn't come with me. But it did go well. I'm not sure if Dad was on his best behavior or what, but he apologized me at least. He told me that I was right, and that he should have protected me better as a child, and that he should never have believed that his 14-year-old daughter would try to manipulate him. He did not mention my stepmother at all, though. He just kind of skated past the subject in general, but at this point, I wouldn't expect anything else from him. He will defend that woman with his dying breath even if his version of defending is pretending that she isn't a monster. It was kind of cathartic to hear him actually apologize for once and admit to me that he was wrong. But at the same time, we're exactly where we were before. He still won't admit that his wife was abusive and I won't budge on her not being welcome. It's like we made all the progress in the world, but also none whatsoever. At this point, I'm resigned to it. I was resigned before, and I became unresigned when he asked me to meet him. But now I'm back to where I was. All I can do is hope that our relationship doesn't suffer any more than it already has. I want my father at the wedding. I want him to walk me down the aisle. I just hope that he got the message about his wife loud and clear. Update number three. Hey everybody, I know it's been a few months since I've last updated on how everything is exactly going. And a few of you have been curious. Well, the wedding's tomorrow. And I'm almost dead with nerves. It's 10 p.m. I should be asleep. I have an early morning routine ahead of me, followed by a long day. I've been scrolling on my phone for about half an hour, which is why I'm even on here in the first place. I've been far too busy with wedding preparations for the past month, and this post just about flew out of my mind. I only just remembered when I scrolled to the last page of my applications and saw all the notifications. Well, everything's going pretty swell. We had the rehearsal dinner today and everything went smoothly. My parents were seated at tables on opposite ends of the room, so there were no issues there. My brother sat beside my dad and we've both decided that he's going to be the ring bearer for the ceremony. I think my stepmother is back at home and everything seems like it's going to go perfectly. I mean, dad's still a little grumpy and the topic of my stepmother is a bit touchy, but he seems to be holding it in for now, which I appreciate. I'm not going to bring her up to him and he's not going to bring her up to me and I'm happy enough to leave it that way. I'll keep this update short and sweet and leave it at that. I'm going to go to sleep now, but I'll let you know how the big day goes soon. Next time I update this thread, I'll probably be on my honeymoon. What's up guys, Mr. Redito here, so there's two more updates, but I just want you to know. Update number four, coming up next, is an absolute roller coaster. If you're new to the channel and you're into this type of story and content, make sure that you subscribe because I release stories every single day. Here is update number four. Strap your seatbelts. She showed up. She showed up. She actually showed up to my wedding. 
knowing that she wasn't welcome and that it isn't the worst part of it, what this witch has done. She showed up to my wedding in a white dress. I don't even know how to begin, but I'm going to try to give you all the facts, or at least the ones that I have. Everything was going pretty smoothly at first. I got my hair and makeup done, and we were in the car on the way to church. Fine. We got in, and I settled into the little bride waiting room when my maid of honor runs in. It was about five minutes until I was supposed to make my entrance, so her panic started my own wave of panic. I didn't even know what was wrong yet. I asked her what happened, and she told me that my stepmother had just entered the church, sat in the very front pew, wearing white... My maid of honor likes to make jokes, so at first I didn't believe her. I thought that she was just trying to make me laugh, so I wasn't so nervous, so I laughed. Even though I didn't think that it was funny. Well, she didn't laugh back. And that's when I realized that she was being dead serious. My dad was in the room, seeing as he was about to walk me down the aisle, and when I looked at him, he had this gross, self-satisfied smile on his face, more of a smirk than anything. I asked him what he was doing, what's going on, and he just said, my stepmother raised half of me, and that she deserved to be there just as much as anybody else. When I tell you I was almost hysterical, I mean it. I told my maid of honor to go and get my stepmom to leave, but she said that she already did that. According to her, my stepmother had arrived half an hour ago, and my husband, knowing that I didn't want her here, had spent 20 minutes trying to convince her to leave quietly without making a scene. When he realized that she wasn't going to move, he sent my maid of honor in to warn me so that I wouldn't be blindsided while I was walking down the aisle. Apparently, when she refused to move, the best man had tried to pull her off of her seat, and she'd been threatened to have him arrested for assault. Well, I was panicking at this point. And the next thing I knew, the music was starting and my dad was trying to give me his arm. He thought I was actually going to let him walk me down the aisle after he's chosen his wife over me yet again. I'm not even surprised at his audacity at this point and I really thought our relationship was going to change. Even improve after we had this long conversation, but oh no. He's made his choice and he never chose me. His own daughter, his firstborn, all that jazz. I didn't want to cause a scene in front of everyone, and I do regret this, but I took his arm, and I plastered a fake smile on my face and let him walk me down the aisle. My logic at the time was that everyone had already just seen my fiancé and his best man trying to make an elderly woman leave. In my head, they'd seen the tense interaction and have already been made uncomfortable. I didn't want to cause another scene, especially because my boss and co-workers were sitting right there in the church. I regret it because now my memory of my wedding was what was supposed to be the best day of my life. It's tainted with knowing that I let a man who has never put me first in his life give me away to the man I love. The vows, you can definitely say they were painful too. It felt like I could hear everybody whispering, gossiping about my stepmother's white dress. I know that they probably weren't intellectually, but at the time, it felt like there was a big spotlight on me, and everybody was just laughing. I barely heard a word that the priest even said. I was too busy trying to ignore the elephant in the room, and I could see my stepmother out of the corner of my eye. She had sat on my husband's side of the aisle, and I believe she did it deliberately so that I would be able to see her throughout the entire ceremony. I'm absolutely disgusted with her, but more so at my father. I wouldn't put anything past that woman, and nothing she does could ever surprise me at this point. It's his willingness to allow her to walk all over me that upsets me. I'm on my honeymoon, supposed to be having the time of my life, and all I can do is cry. I've barely left the hotel room, and my husband's at a loss as to how to cheer me up. Update 5, final update. Hey everyone, it's been a few months since the last update, I thought I'd just give you a finale to this. I just want to put things to bed. First things first, I haven't spoken to my father since the wedding. I avoided him like the plague at the reception and I danced with my father-in-law rather than him. My mom has been a real strength during this. 
even though all she can do is insult my stepmother with me. It does make me feel better when she calls her <laughs> certain names. Married life has been treating me very well. Thinking back, I'm glad that I didn't make a scene at the wedding. It was a bad day, but it seemed like all my guests had fun, at least. And Dad hasn't bothered trying to contact me, and I haven't been able to reach my brother either. I think my father and stepmom have probably filled his head with nonsense about me. I just want to take a minute and thank everybody who contacted me throughout this entire ordeal. Especially all the women with similar experiences that you've gone through. You've really helped me out through this, and I believe that I've made some lifelong friends. Alright, so to me, this story, the one person in this entire story that just makes me the most mad has to be the father. Because over and over again, OP kept getting disrespected by the stepmother, and the stepmother was saying OP's just a liar and it's because her mom's sick why she's acting this way, and the father believed her over and over, even though OP tried to tell her dad, hey, this lady is actually abusing me when you're at work. I know you're not listening to me, but I've told you for years. And then the icing on the cake is obviously when she shows up to the wedding. I would have put my foot down. I would not have walked down that aisle as long as she was sitting front row in that white bridal dress. Guys, I want to know one question from you. What would you have done if you were about to walk down the aisle and you see that toxic, vile stepmother sitting at the end of the row waiting on you to make your grand entrance? What's your reaction? Drop your comments down below. Tell me exactly what you're doing in that moment in time. And guys, that's all the content for today. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe so you never miss a story. Have a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next one.